So folks, my goodness, what's happening as we speak is changing the entire game. And that's awful news for old Donnie. Guys, this is all about recent mistakes that Donald Trump has made, which has ended his career, which has taken out his own career, what was left of it, just in the last few moments. And it has also has everything to do with a brand new maneuver by Judge Chutkin. She made a couple key threats to Donald Trump, really promises that if you continue to mess with me, I'm going to take you out. I'm going to silence you and take you out. And what she just did with regard to the trial and when it's going to happen is shocking everybody. Things are moving much faster than even I and likely you expected. Watch all of this and then we'll break it down. It is essential. Guys, big news. Statements. The next step for a judge in a normal case would be to order imprisonment, end quote. Joining me now is the former United States attorney, Carol Lamb. She is an MSNBC legal analyst. Carol, good to see you. Thank you for being with us. Thank you, Ali. Carol, you were a judge, and this is actually complicated. Peter, uh, uh, Charlie puts it, you know, simply, but yes, the first step wouldn't be to order the arrest of Donald Trump. It would be to possibly warn him. The second step might be to impose a fine. Then what actually happens? Because I believe nobody wants to be the judge that sends someone to arrest Donald Trump for a tweet or for something he said at a speech. Well, you're right about that, Ali. And you're also right that when you become a judge, the first thing they tell you is don't do what you see on TV. Don't bang the gavel and say yeah. you're in contempt and I'm throwing you in prison. I mean, that, that just doesn't happen. You have due process rights as a criminal defendant with respect to orders like this. You know, I think one of the problems is with the word gag order. It sort of implies that you're putting a gag over a person's mouth and they can't say anything. That's not the case here. What Jack Smith is requesting based on Donald Trump's prior behavior is he's requesting a sort of restraint of extrajudicial statements, it's actually called. It's a, an order saying, look, you just can't do what you're, you've been doing, which is basically threatening or calling upon others to take some sort of a re, uh, retaliatory action against court personnel, juror, potential jurors, witnesses, parties, lawyers, that sort of thing. So, um, so that's what we have here. But in terms of enforcement of any restrictive order that the judge may impose, I actually think there are a few things that she could do. Certainly, she could impose a monetary fine. She could say, I'm going to impose a fine of X dollars the first time you violate my order. It'll double if you do it again. It'll triple if you do it again. If that doesn't work, she could go another path. She could say, I'm actually going to require you. And this was done with Elon Musk in a civil case. Before you say anything on social media, you have to run it by your lawyers. And that has actually been upheld albeit in a civil case, it's been upheld by um, an appellate ah. court. So that's another possibility is that she could put his attorneys on the hot seat as officers. So of the that's court. interesting. And that's not yeah. a that's not a First Amendment. Vice. It's not saying you can't say what you want, but run it through a filter to make sure that you're not breaking any laws in uh, in saying things, because Donald Trump associates all this with stifling of his speech. But that's not actually what Jack Smith is asking for. And when you read that indictment, it says on the second page of the indictment, Donald Trump had a right to deny the election. He had a right to, to lie about the election. He had a right to seek redress about the outcome of the election. But there's Absolutely something right. You're saying there's something very specific. here. Jack Smith's not interested in curtailing Donald Trump's free speech rights. He's not interested in curtailing his First Amendment free speech rights, but he is very interested in maintaining the sanctity, the respect. Like a lawless president is like the apogee of the worst thing that we imagine. But the article that Trump is responding to by Jeff Goldberg in The Atlantic about General Milley paints a picture of Trump as just plain nuts. And nobody mm -hmm. like that should have the ability to launch a nuclear weapon and destroy or a nuclear war and destroy the planet. And so I hope that this article spurs discussion about a no first use policy, you know, so that no president uh, can do something like this. I and mean, the article is terrifying I, and every American should read it. Yeah, 
I think a lot of national security experts would agree with you and anyone who reads that excellent article. So we're waiting this week, Neil, Judge Chutkin, to kind of we're waiting for Trump's response from Trump's team. And we're also waiting then for Judge Chutkin to make a decision about this protective order. How does all of this weigh into that, you know, his his continued threats? I mean, Trump was already on really thin ice beforehand. Remember that Judge Chutkin, right from the start, when he she first brought him into court and, you know, had his first hearing before the magistrate, he was warned, like, you know, you have to, you know, stay within the lines. And Trump, of course, has been pushing those lines dramatically over the last six weeks. And, you know, this tweet, I think, is further evidence of that. So I've been hoping that Judge Chutkin will call Donald Trump directly into the court, look at him in the eye and say, you can't do this stuff. This is not the way any criminal trial can operate. You're not special. You are a criminal mm -hmm. defendant, Donald Trump, not President Donald Trump. So we're waiting for tomorrow's the deadline, as I mentioned, for Trump's team to kind of respond here. What do you anticipate the argument is they're going to make as they respond to Jack Smith's gag order request? Yeah, a lot of whining about free speech and the First Amendment. And the First Amendment does allow him to do some things, but not intimidate witnesses and interfere with the search of tr for truth. I mean Thank you for uh, being with us. Lisa, let me start with you. I talked to somebody yesterday who took exception, actually, to characterizing what uh, Jack Smith has asked for as a gag order. Um, he's asking for, and I think it's really important to make sure that in, in Jack Smith's indictment of Donald Trump, he makes clear on the second page of it yep. that Donald Trump's got First Amendment rights right. to deny the election, to lie about the election, to pursue any remedies that he wanted to pursue, to change or you know make sure the outcome of the election was what he thought it would be. So Jack Smith seems to be very clear on the fact that anything he says that Donald Trump should or shouldn't do, Donald Trump is going to cry foul, saying he's violating his First Amendment rights. Explain this so-called gag order request. Yeah, so first of all, I'm one of the people who would probably take exception at describing it as a gag order, too, for the same reasons that your friend described. What is happening here is an effort to restrain Trump and his legal team's speech only insofar as it poses a danger to people who are participants in the process, literally their physical security and safety, right. and or endangers the integrity of the process. Beyond that, as Jack Smith says in the indictment itself, everything else is fair game, especially because Donald Trump is a political actor who has political speech rights. Where I think it gets a little bit sticky is some of the comments that Trump has made that Jack Smith takes exception to. For example, describing the people of Washington, D.C. as having particular proclivities or biases. Those are the people that formulate the jury pool here. Right. And if Trump is not allowed to talk about anybody who lives in Washington, D.C., you can see how we get close to an intersection of... First Amendment rights bumping up right. against what's necessary to protect the integrity of this process. And so, Melissa, there are several issues now. Let's say Donald Trump, let's say Jack Smith even gets what he's asking for. Uh, now Donald Trump ends up saying something uh, that either has to be discussed in court because Donald Trump will say, I didn't I didn't breach the order. Uh, Jack Smith will say he does. Maybe he gets a fine. Maybe he doesn't get a fine. Maybe he gets a second fine. Maybe he doesn't pay the fine. No judge really wants to be involved in this, right? No judge really wants to be the one who sends a, a sheriff or a marshal to arrest Donald Trump because he he betrayed this this gag order or whatever it is. So this the enforcement of this whole thing becomes a problem unto itself. That's exactly right, because not only do we have to define what is meant by harassing and intimidating speech, when he makes a comment, then there's going to be an argument of whether or not that actually violated the order. And then the judge has to decide what to do about it. As you said, is she really going to is she going to find him? Is she going to hold him in contempt, put him in custody? That's highly unlikely to happen. And so not only in policing his speech, but deciding what to do about it is going to be a major issue. I anticipate that she will follow through on the warning of moving the trial up which Trump definitely has indicated that he does not want. They would rather delay this trial. So I think that will probably be the remedy she goes with if there becomes this back and forth of whether or not if that order is issued, if he has violated it. And that's an interesting point, because she did say that on the day uh, in which he was remanded. She said, you know, the, the one way I can solve this is make this a speedier trial so that you have less time to sort of pollute the environment. Is this basically Jack Smith asking Judge Chutkin to gag Trump? He is. That's exactly what's going on. And he goes not only through Trump's history of intimidating Nicole, 
witnesses and others, not only right after the 2020 election, but then through the present day. And there is detail about social media posts about the judge herself, about Washingtonians and how Washingtonians are going to be prejudiced against him, about lawyers at the Office of Special Counsel, about Biden, and then about individual witnesses, including Bill Barr. And they go through that history to basically say to her, don't sanction him, gag him. And that is to preserve the potential for a fair trial. That's exactly right. Basically, they're saying, you know, he doesn't know this, but we're doing this for him. But they're also doing it for themselves. They're trying to ensure that any trial in which Trump is convicted is one that's immune from appeal on the basis that he didn't get a fair shake. And they know that he's doing everything that he can to corrode justice in the district of D.C. So you can see there, there's a few things. One, there's a bit of talk about what she might do, but also what's definitely going down. Judge Chutkin has likely made some of the biggest moves. And one thing that she's clearly doing is hammering Donald Trump on the question of speech. Now, when Jack has come forward and asked for Trump to be at least partially silenced, he knows he can't get everything, but Shutkin's likely going to give Jack 95 to 99% of what he wanted. And what's critical is that she's going to really put the screws to him in a way that not only silences him to a large degree, but is brilliant in that it'll create tensions between Trump and his lawyers, Right. This is a brilliant move. This is, not, this is not something Chutkin, because Chutkin's impartial, but this is a brilliant move by Jack because he saw this coming. And he knows that if Chutkin makes Trump vet everything through his lawyers before he has to post, that's going to lead to him fighting with his lawyers because he's going to want to write something, you know, insane, unhinged, deranged at 3.45 a.m. tonight or whatever, and the judge, and he's going to have to run that by his lawyers. And his lawyers are going to have to be up all night ready for Trump to post, and they're going to have to read it and vet it and make him cut or add certain words to avoid legal culpability. But this is also critical, because what notes there, in addition to the fact that Donald Trump and his team are making massive errors in the witnesses they're calling, is that this is such a big blow, guys, when it comes to the trial date. And Shutkin has made it clear that the trial date is moving forward. She has said this. She's already promised this. So this is a done deal. Chutkin is a woman of her word. She said, if you keep doing this, the trial date's moving forward. And that's what's happening. She's not likely to jail Trump in advance of trial. She should, but she likely won't. No judge is perfect. But what she can and will do is move the trial date forward. And that'll screw Donald Trump in more ways than one. He has plenty of time. I'm not worried about his constitutional rights. But what I do know is that this has never been about delaying to, to have a, a time to prepare. It was all about delaying to get to the election. And now that's impossible.